Hey, good afternoon, everyone that's uh, jumping on here live right now. Uh, I talked about uh, last week about uh, trying to do a little lessons learned from my trip to fire combat. Uh, it's literally taken me a week just to find the time uh, to get on here. I actually uh, recorded a video for members of my department um, and put on YouTube yesterday uh, because I actually had a lot of guys reaching out to me that were asking kind of questions like, hey, you know, what'd you learn at it? What'd you experience? And it was really cool to, to see that many people that are interested that maybe I didn't think would be, right? So that was uh, definitely something I wasn't expecting and I'm probably still get more questions as it goes back because I've only been back one shift um, since it's all happened. But I want to jump in here, share with you guys kind of the same thing, uh, but I figured I'd do it live this way. If anyone got some questions while you're on it, ask away, you know? So the biggest thing I got from this event, if you guys don't know, uh, first of all, sign up, do this thing. Um, it is one of the best trainings I've been to, and I don't even know if you can call it a training because it's, it's, it's a, a drill, right? You learn by doing the drills, and then, you know, it's hot washed afterwards, so you learn something, but the skills aren't taught. You kind of already have to have those. Um, either through the prereqs they have there or, um, you know, training on your own with it. So it's very interesting to see it all come together. Uh, Jim's definitely got a very uh, refined, well-oiled machine there. I'm, I'm very impressed how um, it just works, right? You go do it, it works. Um, and it definitely will teach me how to be uh, even a better instructor on my own department with things. So uh, basically you show up, you get assigned um, to an engine in at, at half the day and the other half the day you're assigned to a truck and you're doing engine work or truck work so you're stretching lines or you're throwing ladders and doing searches so um, it's broken up you get to do a little bit of both um, it depends on how you sign up for we actually um, my crew had three officers and a firefighter so we just rotated who had the officer position and I will tell you if you are an officer do that position because um, it was it was priceless experience of just doing things a little bit differently um, because the fires were, I, I personally think the fires were harder than what I normally encounter at, uh, at my own department. So uh, we did roughly about 30 fires in the four day period, ranging from, you know, just an engine and truck going to multi-alarm and I'm definitely tired. You know, day one after six fires, I was pretty much ready to go home. <laughs> uh, but I was there with a good group of guys and, um, you know, we stuck it out. Um, but that, that's the process, right? It's kind of like a big long workout. I think day two was like eight fires, day three was 10. And the last day was maybe four, um, but you know there's always victims. They're always heavy, um, and being a Florida guy, uh, you know it's been a long time since I live in Chicago. But we always ended up have anytime there's a basement fire, it's somehow me and the other guy we ended up down there. Like, but we don't have basements in Florida. Why do we keep getting sent? But um, it was a great experience, um, and, and I, I really recommend it. And I've, I've been talking with um, one of our operations chiefs, and he's going to try to figure out how to send uh, send more every year, which I, I, to me would be a culture changer. If you can send a lot of your people to this, uh, an event like this fire combat, um, it's just really going to dial in the operations, right? So I'll share with you some of the stuff, you know. Um, and these are just my specific takeaways. Um, there's tons going on there, but this is stuff I could remember when I wrote down. Uh, biggest thing, I will tell you, it was a very humbling experience for myself. Um, we are not as good as we think we are, and we do not know as much as we think we do. And you really have to experience more. Like if you think you got it all figured out, go experience more. Um, it's kind of like the guy, oh, I don't need to train. I've always been good at fires. Uh, you probably haven't been to enough then that you haven't had your your, your bell ring um, because of something of challenging that has occurred, right? Just like the un, an undefeated fighter possibly, possibly. They just haven't had a harder opponent yet. Um, we, we're all going to get beat sometime. So this this definitely pushed me physically and mentally. Um, and I, I'm glad I did it and it really showed me I, I need to even train a little bit more often and maybe more gear training. You know, a lot of times we'll just stretch or we'll do trainings just to kind of, just, just a regular uh, duty uniform. Um, so that was a big takeaway is that we're not as good as we think we are. We don't know as much as we think we do. Um, something I got said there, which was so simple, but um, simple works, right? Uh, the engine officer finds a fire. So most of the fires I had because of the building construction we have, I've been able to um, either tell it, you know, when we're pulling past, getting three sides on the size up or by the front door, can see it. Not, is not hasn't been a too much of an issue uh, there wasn't the case so the fires went really smooth if the engine boss was able to get in ahead of the line locate the fire and then direct the nozzle team now our engine companies up there had four people on it right that's maybe not the case with who's, who's watching this video right now so you have to adapt that though um, how I'm gonna adapt that is if I can call the stretch from the rig I'm going to if I'm not sure yet I'm probably gonna have the guys hang tight and let me get a better eye on it 
Um, if I know it's gonna be a long stretch and I do see smoke, hey, let's start with our courtyard or something, but hang tight by the door, let me find out exactly where this fire is. Um, I'll get in ahead of them, and so this way I can come back, direct them, and I, I'm the backup guy. Um, unless I, I've got a big crew, or by the time I get back, if there's another engine or, or ladder truck that came to help with the line, um, that's something I got from it. So um, I'm gonna change my routine a little bit. Uh, know where the fire's at. That was the biggest thing for that that first in officer, so you can you know, get that line in place and, and get going. Um, and for those co other companies coming in, help get that first line in place, right? As you're as you're coming in with it. Um, and I actually have some video. It's already on YouTube of uh, I have my GoPro on, and you can see one of the fires. I was officer, and that one of them was like probably the smoothest one that I had when I played officer, um, because I went in, was able to find the fire, I directed the team. It just went like clockwork, and it, it was all the benefits of getting in there ahead of the line and finding that fire, so you can direct it right. Um, no flashlights till the fire is found. It's funny. I was talking to a buddy of mine. He's like, "You didn't know this?" I'm like, "No one's ever talked about that with me, and I've never had that experience." Uh, that's something we saw there. Um, kept the flashlights off until we found the fire. Knocked it down. Once we had knocked down, then we'd use our lights for if we were doing a search or anything like that. But you definitely can find the fire much easier without the, the flashlights kind of casting um, um, kind of like high beams, right? I don't have one on my helmet. I got a, like an angle light and I got a box light, which I always like having too. Um, but that was part of it was uh, keep those lights off. I, you're able to see the glow easier uh, because all these fires were challenging to find. Uh, you'll see the glow and listen uh, for the crackling feel for the heat and you put your mask back or your hood back a little bit couldn't really say that in the, in the video I put out at work uh, but that was something I brought up I got told that years ago if I had a captain he goes hey if you ever have a problem pull your hood back a little bit um, but that was something and if you watch one of the videos I think it's a two-story townhouse fire we had um, you can actually hear the crackling of the fire as we're up there and that was something I was looking for I was, I'm like all right it's warmer on the second floor uh, than it was on the first floor I could kind of hear it and I could feel, feel it getting warmer as getting there. I said, all right, probably keep going. I kept going, saw the glow, called from the nozzle team, they came up. Um, so it was nice. I was not a working officer um, at this event. Back home I am. You know, I gotta get back on that line and help out. Um, I talked about no flashlights, use your lights for search. Uh, something that got said a lot was make it happen, right? Um, that's what we do in this profession. But on the uh, on these drills, if you're having struggles or, hey, we got one guy don't got an air bottle, we'll drop that guy off and you three get here and work. Make it happen. It got said a lot there and it really makes you think that, hey, well, I told the chief this. No, get up to him. Make sure he got the message. This, this applies in the firehouse and outside, uh, on the fire ground and off the fire ground. Um, we have a responsibility to kind of look out for the team. That comes back to some of my expectations I, I've gone over before. I've always protected the team, but make it happen. Uh, communications, we, we used real radios when we were there, um, and they had real issues and, and weren't working sometimes, and um, I, I, on video, I have proof that I was talking on it. Um, however, um, they, a lot of times the transmissions weren't coming through, so everyone's like, yeah, we had no idea what you are doing. I'm like, oh, well, I tried, I guess. Uh, but the point is, try your radio. If that's not working, shout, um, which I've had chiefs in the past where we had to do a lot of face-to-face -face stuff. Uh, shout, they're still not getting it. Get up, walk up to them mask to mask and let them know what's going on but communications are important inside the fire um inside the house and outside um you know we think it's just to the battalion chief but just to other companies working inside and making sure that message is received because a lot of times we had issues where the truck got ahead of the engine and oh we're backed up didn't know hey make it happen get over us move past let's make this happen right um, another thing was ask for help early and that was a big part because um there's always victims and they had some 250 pounders in there and i'll tell you right now um, after going to that many fires and you're going downstairs and you're already doing other searches and you pulled other people out, those 250 pounds get really heavy quick. Um, so what I learned was ask for help early because help is going to be delayed, right? First of all, someone hearing it, deciding to come help, whatever the case may be. Maybe you're short staffed and there's not a lot of help anyways. Um, but especially if you find a victim, ask for help early and then start working though. Start to get work to get that person out. Um, but there's always going to be that reflex time um, that happens. So it's going to be delayed. So ask for it right away. And the last... But best part, and Jim actually said this when he was down here um, teaching a course, was that um, there's really you know no such thing as advanced, it's just master the basics. We've all heard that before, uh, which is 100% true because there's nothing advanced we did uh, during this week. It was all uh, basic, basic things, right? But something he, he brought up, and I had to experience myself, he goes, if you want to make it advanced, he's like, just add some heat and smoke. And that's really all this event was. You know, These were Connex containers. We had uh, obstacles to go over. And, um, you know, there was a fire, but it was in a small room, probably the size of 
this tiki hut or, or smaller, um, that small fire provided the heat that's needed, so you experience it. Also provided some smoke, but they had some probably smoke barrels to help because visibility was um, pretty much none uh, through most of it. And um, so all it really was, especially when we got into the basement part, was um, there's a lot of heat when we got down there and a lot of smoke. Um, and it changes the game, it adds those stressors, and now you can't see. So now you go by feel, especially with, with you, if you're humping line and, and, and feeding it, or you're trying to do a search. You know, um, we try to stay upright, uh, but as we got fatigued, we we're kind of like crawling like babies. You know what I mean? Um, and we kept catching ourselves. And um, one of the few things I actually used was webbing. Um, webbing was important, especially if moving a victim with stairs. Otherwise, I was doing a lot of um, leg drags, and we teach that to our recruits uh, on my department. Uh, that seemed that was best for me because it was a really good grip, and I could just go backwards. And I just had someone, hey, just lead me, and I'm going right. Um, or sometimes threw it over shoulder just, just to get out um, because it was definitely um, challenging obstacles we had to go over. But the, what really made made this event advanced uh, was the heat and smoke aspect um, and adding that. It was also a well-oiled machine. It was just boom. You finish one fire, you hot wash it, you clean up, you go get your air bottle. Five, ten minutes later, you're going to another one, right? Um, so that's what I got out of it was it's important to have uh, live burns and to do it right. Um you might not be able to do all the time because I understand the logistics of it, uh, but definitely once or twice a year, try to get your department through some stuff um, that's adding that heat and smoke element. And if you can't add the heat because of whatever, at least get some smoke in there and, and try and replicate as much as possible because it's a game changer, right? You're, you're gonna, it's gonna be more realistic. And if you can see everything, things are easy. It's when you take away that vision, right? Um, so that's kind of what I wanted to share with you guys. If you, if you had any questions, I'm going to go, try to go through the comments now and, and see if anyone had anything. But I, I want to definitely jump on here and share it with you guys and, and encourage all of you um, to go do it if it's something you're interested in. Um, because I'll, I wish I would have done it 20 years ago. And it has nothing to do with the age factor. has everything to do with if I did this 20 years ago, I would have been that much better of a firefighter and definitely a better uh, company officer. Uh, because of the sets and reps that you get there and the things that you learn that uh, you guys didn't pass down to me um, coming up. Uh, some of it, but not all of it, and I really think that's because um, you would get that stuff if you went to a lot of fires consistently. Um, it's just something you learn, and that's what we did. We just learned quickly there um, because it was going to a lot of fires consistently. So somewhere, Jimmy mentioned, you know, somewhere this got lost. He's not sure where or why, but that's what happened. So I'll try and go through some of these uh, comments, touch base on them. Otherwise, let you guys enjoy the Sunday because I think I've got a honey-do list that's waiting for me. Um, see Mike FDT, FDTN hang on let's see it says see more and I'm trying to so FDTN took my personal comfort level and forced me to push past anything I knew and realize either I get the job done that's weird. It won't let me keep seeing more of that comment. But um, definitely, yeah, I was definitely outside my comfort level. And, and I will I would admit firsthand, I was, I was ready to go home early on. Um, but stuck it out, and I'm glad I did. 